basically two types of non-invasive ventilation one is the CPAP and the other one is BiPAP so what happens if a type 2 respiratory failure patient in a COPD goes on to having more acidotic state the inspiratory positive airway pressure is maintained through the inspiratory circuit and the expiratory positive pressure is maintained through the expiratory circuit now i will discuss about the non-invasive ventilation so first up what exactly is non-invasive ventilation and when we need it you can in a very easy way think that if a patient requires intubation but the patient is conscious at the stage and his condition is generally very unwell these are in broad heading you can consider non-invasive ventilation so for non-invasive ventilation that, that means ventilation is given from the outside source okay and the way of giving this outside source ventilation or assisted ventilation is non-invasive so this is different from mechanical intubation which is commonly seen in the ICU settings. We see that most of the ICU patients, they are unconscious patients and they are given, you know, some uh, mechanical intubation to continue their normal breathing pattern. But non-invasive ventilation patients are usually conscious to semi-conscious. And these are done in ICU settings or high definition units. And they kind of look like I'm trying to draw this machine. I'm not sure how much well I can draw. So they kind of look like they're like a box and then pipes come from there. They look like, you know, these are very high end quality made out of very high quality plastic. And usually there is like a tight fitted mask attached to the end of the tubes. And there is an inspiratory circuit and there is expiratory circuit so you don't have to need uh, you don't need to know more details about this so there are basically two types of non-invasive ventilation one is the CPAP and the other one is BiPAP so CPAP is continuous and BiPAP is bi-level the rest of the word is basically the same. So that is continuous positive airway pressure. And this is bi-level positive airway pressure. So what's the basic difference? In case of the CPAP, during the inspiration and the expiration, the, both of this cycle, the pressure will be maintained in a very similar manner. So if the inspiration pressure is around five to six centimeter of water, then the expiration pressure will be equal to that. So during the entire breathing cycle, the inspiratory circuit and the expiratory circuit will maintain the same level of pressure. That is known as the continuous positive airway pressure, non-invasive ventilation. In case of the BiPAP, what happens is the expiratory circuit is less. Or you can just remember it like the inspiratory cycle. Inspiration is greater than expiration. So in both of this CPAP and BiPAP, there are mainly two components, which is known as the IPAP and EPAP. This is known as the inspiratory positive airway pressure, expiratory positive airway pressure. The inspiratory positive airway pressure is maintained through the inspiratory circuit and the expiratory positive pressure is maintained through the expiratory circuit. In case of the CPAP, the IPAP and the EPAP level will be same, but in case of the BI level, the IPAP will be more than the EPAP. This is particularly useful in patients who are having some form of carbon dioxide retention in their body because 
the inspiratory pressure needs to be more to clear out the retention carbon dioxide from the body, which is why in carbon dioxide retention, we usually tend to go for BiPAP, non-invasive ventilation, okay? So the water level of pressure is usually maintained in case of BiPAP is, the IPAP is ranging from 11 to 15 centimeter of water. And the EPAP is usually maintained at the level of four to five centimeter of water. These values can vary from device to device, and they can also vary from person to person. These values can be adjusted by the help of an ICU specialist or intensivist and a respiratory specialist, and it depends on the ABG report as well of that particular patient. So what are some of the indications of BiPAP, that is our main topic of discussion rather than the CPAP because we are discussing about the management of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which often presents with type 2 respiratory failure or the condition itself is associated with carbon dioxide retention in the body. So the indications of non-invasive ventilation, this is important. Number one is COPD patients with type 2 respiratory failure where the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is on the rise or similarly if the COPD patient has persistently according to the ABG report persistently raised acidotic level when the pH level is between 7.25 to 7.35. So what happens if a type 2 respiratory failure patient in a COPD goes on to having more acidotic state? That means when the patient is becoming drowsier, is losing his or her consciousness level, partial pressure of carbon dioxide on the ABG report shows fourfold increase from the initial baseline and the pH keeps on falling less than 7.25. In that case, there is a very good indication of considering give, sending the patient to the ICU and considering mechanical ventilation via intubation. Okay, so this is one of the important indication for non-invasive ventilation. Number two is Type 2 respiratory failure due to other conditions. For example, it can be due to neuromuscular disease, for example, myasthenia gravis, myotonic dystrophy, some form of you know, a neuromuscular condition which causes diaphragm paralysis, thereby causing ineffective breathing. Another important aspect would be, for example, kyphoscoliosis patient, the chest diameter is compressed, thereby causing carbon dioxide entrapment in the body as there is not much space left in the lungs. And another condition that we can consider is obstructive sleep apnea if the carbon dioxide level is on the rise. In that case, we can also consider bilevel, uh, bilevel positive pressure ventilation. Number three is in ARDS patient, if they are refractory to CPAP. So BiPAP is needed in a bit more severe condition rather than CPAP, okay? So number four is last but not the least, that is in case of weaning from tracheal intubation, so a patient, as previously I've discussed, is deteriorating despite being on BiPAP. In that case, we consider tracheal intubation or mechanical ventilation, but what if the patient reverses and shows improvement? So the patient needs to be gradually weaned off of the tracheal intubation. In that case, 
we have to consider giving the person non-invasive ventilation again and check his vitals, see his breathing pattern, check the oxygen saturation, check the ABG report, and then finally gradually weaning him off from the non-invasive ventilation later on, okay? So when things are getting worse, from drug treatment to LTOT, we can consider non-invasive ventilation. Final stage would be mechanical intubation. If the patient expires, that's an unfortunate case. If the patient reverses back, then this will be the algorithm, okay? So weaning from mechanical intubation. These are in broad headings, some of the indications for non-invasive ventilation.